Hello and welcome to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Santo. And well, I'll be flying solo today, but we have a review for you this week. In today's episode review, we are going to review The My Little Pony Feats of Friendship, issue number two. So, first impressions are in order, I guess? Or do I. Ha- yeah, this is synopsis. Give me a second. So, in this issue, the young six take part in the feat of friendship, but Swiftfoot's evil scheme threatens their teamwork. Ooh, evil. So, anywho, first impressions are in order, and. Oh, uh, you know what? This comic is fun. Um, I, I mentioned last week that uh, Swift here were like, what's her uh, deal and whatnot? Oh, and she's sabotaging the team. Oh, because she's not a pony, I think. What? So, yeah, that, that, that is confusing. So we get to see um, her do more evil stuff and whatnot. And yeah, this, this uh, issue here really highlights or really um, expands on the um, universe, like what is Swift Food's deal and so on, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, um, let's hop right into it. Uh, if you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Welcome back. So we start off with the comic, sorry, we start off the comic with uh, Princess Twilight Sparkle announcing the opening ceremony of the uh, games. Uh, it seems that she invited almost uh, everyone from all of Equestria. Uh, we seen the silhouettes there. We got the Changeling uh, Kingdom, the Dragon Kingdom, the Yaks, the Hippogriff, and I see some ponies. Oh yeah, there's Grandpa Grumps. So the Griffin uh, Empire too. So yeah, everybody's here. And this event is going to be really awesome and so on. So, um, Princess Twilight is just like saying, Yo, um, I made this, uh, me and the crew, so this is going to be awesome. Uh, look at the Colosseum, it's very cool. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, while that's happening and so on, we get to see our protagonist. The young six. Oh man, I cannot get that. Like, I still like the student six. So anyway, um, we see them on the bench talking, saying that I know we help, but still, um, Gallus just says uh, it's a bit different when it's filled with bajillion cheering ponies, and they feel proud that they help, um, made the well help help made the stadium in some part. So yeah, they're they're, they're pretty proud of themselves. Then we see Swiftfoot comes in uh, a bit late. Uh, it seems like she overslept, and uh, she notices that wait, wait, everyone's together. I wonder, like, oh, I, I thought I, I sabotaged their friendship. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, Gallus just says, "Yeah, sorry if we were snippy yesterday. The stress of getting things ready and performing was getting to all of us. I think so. Yeah, they they just brush it off because." And they were under a bit of pressure. So, um, they, they high five and Swiftfoot just mentions, oh, we'll see about that. She has a evil green in her eye and so on. And then, uh, we get back to Twilight who retells the story of the ponies of old where, um, the founding fathers of Equestria came together during a Blizzard storm, uh, 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 during a blizzard storm, yeah. And then, um, alone, they would, uh, have froze and been lost forever, but the warmth of their friendship saved their lives and led the way to our great country and so on. So, uh, she's retelling of, uh, sorry, she's retelling the history of Equestria. But we see here that, um, Fleetfoot has an alternate story. So she mentions that <coughs> on the f- day that the founding fathers get together, uh, there was a king named Trance, T H R A Trace, 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 <laughs> okay, Trace, Trace. Um, oh, man, I got no idea how to 
say that name. I'm just going to say Trace. Uh, he was no different than any other leader in the old lands when the Windigo brought their winter storm. So, she's retelling them and whatnot, and um, we don't really see the negative connotation here because um, what she tells us, the audience, and what she's thinking to herself is that uh, the founding fathers of Equestria, the unicorn, pegasi, and earth pony, gather around, big flame, uh, with friendship and whatnot, huddle together, keep warm, and uh, what you call this, um, shoo the wind goes away. But uh, when King Trance here came along, they, uh, what was the word she used? Uh, he wasn't shown any kindness or charity. Those so-called friends left him out in the cold. So, yeah, uh, that happened. And she also says that the king uh, didn't need anyone to help survive the storm. He founded the island of Trans and began a proud tribe of the Transians. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> I'm going to pause here for a bit because there's a lot to compile uh, sorry there's a lot of things to uh what's the word i'm looking for this combobulate um unpack there's a lot of things to unpack here so from what we know as the audience at home is that the founding fathers of equestria in that one winter play was done by uh uh the assistance to the leaders not fighting and instead um, talking it out and being friends that let the Windigos away from them and disappear. So that's how we saw it but this is kind of alternate history but at the same time too we didn't really see how mean the founding fathers were. Like this is one person's word against another so this trend here just probably, you know, it's one of those things where context matters. And all we see here is that the founding ponies, in one panel at least, is the founding ponies are gathered around a campfire, keeping themselves warm, while Trans is out in the cold, not even trying to approach them. And they say that uh, they didn't show him any kindness or charity. For all we know that he was just lurking around, seeing the situation and probably thinking to yourself, oh, look at those uh, wuss. I don't want to be related with them. I'm going to go far, far away. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, here's the, here's the thing about this scenario here. It's that, yeah, you're saying that the founding fathers were mean and you pick your ball up and go play by yourself and you started your own kingdom and whatnot and so on. But later when we uh, go deeper in the comic, we find out that most of the citizens of Transia are kind of jerks. So uh, it's one of those things where I'm pondering what is really going on? So yeah, this is one of those scenarios where I wish I had someone to bounce off ideas with. But as for now, from what I can tell, it's one of those things where A, Trans is true to his words that the Founding Fathers were mean, or B, Trans was just really egotistical and didn't want to, how do I put this, uh, relate to the ponies and pick up his one left. So anyway... Uh, you guys can decide which one to pick and it will be very interesting if you have another theory. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. Um, so we see after the opening ceremonies, the ponies are up for their first game. And Smolder goes up to Swift telling her, yo, are you paying attention? Uh, Professor Frejack is trying to explain the rules to us. And I'm, I, I really like this because um, we see that Swift here is, uh, what you call this, daydreaming or zoning out because she's trying, uh, she's remembering stuff from her 
pass and we see that Smolder comes up to her, reminds her about uh, paying attention and we see Applejack talking and we see her saying uh, ellipses with the most apples win in this ain't going to be easy though a friendship comes from a communication uh, sorry comes from clear communication listen to each other and cooperate uh, cooperate here so she's been talking for a while now and yeah um we just noticed this this is one of those cool writing things that is really cool <clears throat> so anyway uh we see that Gallus is flying in the sky, taking charge, and he says something. Uh, he says something to a kid of, um, "Here's the plan. Everybody who can fly will drop apples down into baskets. The rest of them haul them to the drop site. Cool, cool, go, go." And with that, we see that uh, <clears throat> uh, Yona is carrying two baskets, and Swift here has a devious idea to kind of destroy their cooperation so swift goes up to yona saying wow two basket eh and yona just says oh wow i'm strong you know like i'm the big yak here and i'm strong so i can handle this weight and stuff and um swift just says oh cool 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 um glad um glad you're strong otherwise i feel bad for your friends uh, sorry uh, otherwise I feel bad your friends gave me this handy card instead of you and Yona just says oh card would be nice <laughs> then we just see Yona uh, sulk off to the side speaking yakish so as time goes on we see that uh the games are a go. Uh, we see that Gallus plans working. The flyers are flying around, dropping, uh, which we call this, uh, dropping the apples into the cart. Then we see that yeah, um, uh, Swift here has problems, uh, pulling the cart and so on. And then uh, Ga Sandbar here notice and just asks, I'm um, sorry, just says, uh, aren't we going? To haul, uh, we we aren't going to haul much if we go two wagons. Uh, sorry, uh, if we go two wagons. Uh, sorry, to got go to to a wagon. Um, that that is a bit complicated. But what it's trying to say is that, in uh, if they go two at a time, that means nobody's going to. Uh, sorry, the flyers are going to stall dropping the load. So the most convenient way is to go one cart at a time so that there will be always an empty cart for the flyers to drop their goods. But uh, it seems that Swiss plan here is to disrupt that uh, tempo. <clears throat> uh, but she tries to uh, justify by saying, I know, but if I had someone strong with me, maybe we could go faster and so on. But instead, uh, sorry, but it seems that uh, um, Sandbar here is agreeing to her plans, going gaga. But before she could execute her plans, we hear a loud bark. And she sees that, oh no, uh, there is an Orthos, a two-headed dog suddenly appearing out of nowhere and uh, she freaks out and rushes to the drop-off point and hides and I have to ask what why how I mean yeah flutter shy but here what why there's so many questions so <clears throat> Anywho, um, it seems that the Ort, uh, Ortos played around with Sandbar's cart and is, well, basically destroying it. And we, we see that, yeah, uh, they kind of won by default and whatnot. And yeah, um, they, they won because Swift 
foot here to drag the card into the barn to win. And I got no idea what that even... Like, how? Okay, yeah, they won. So, yeah. And we see Yona sulking under apple tree because uh, her teammate gave her two baskets instead of a wagon and so on. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm not even going to um, justify or... Yeah, I'm not even going to justify her actions here. I mean, I know she feels neglected and whatnot, but ah, man, you know what? This is just me. So anyway, we move on to the next event, and the next event is at the Stable Rapids. So, uh, long story short, Rainbow Dash is taking care of this one. There is a huge rapids along the river, and the idea is for the group to create a bridge to go across the river and Rainbow Dash says to a kin of you won't go far without being generous with you with, with one another hint hint ha 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 okay so uh, there's a clue there so each team opens up their shed and sees what's inside uh, they see a plank of wood a few ropes and so on and then we we see that Swift here is just saying or trying to manipulate Smolder here by saying, Isn't it great that Gallus took up, took it upon himself to be our group leader? And Smolder says, Not really. I mean, she seems very jealous at the fact. And on the next panel we see Silver uh saying that ooh ooh, I can fly and swim. Uh, what if I start from? Uh, what if I start building from the other bank? And we we see that there's this uh, split in the party, and yeah, um, Silver is going off to do her own thing while the group are just trying to figure a plan out. So they check, sorry, they inspect everything that's in the shed, and. Uh, they come to the conclusion that they don't have much of anything, like uh, they don't have nails and so on. And before they can um, say anything more, uh, we see another pony. Uh, it's a Pegasi. So she asks uh, Gallus, like, do you have any anchor, anchor rope? And Gallus says, oh yeah, loads of them. Do you have any nails? And she says, no, but we got a ton of wood glue. Uh, team B4 has a bunch of nails and Team R8 seems to have more tools than they can handle. So, <clears throat> with that, it comes to the conclusion or Gallus comes to the conclusion that, oh, I know, I know what we need to do now. We need to work together to build a bridge. Not just us, but everybody on this... Uh, Everybody doing this challenge. And instead of listening to him, everybody's just doing their own thing. In the end, nobody successfully built anything because they didn't want to do... Well, they didn't listen to Gallus. And before that, we see that um, Silverstream is transforming, doing stuff, and Ocellus is a bit jealous of her because um, she's changed form and nobody cares, but when she does it, everybody gets freaked out. And yeah, I don't know, this is one of those things where maybe you change into a scary thing and people are not used to it. That's just me. I don't know. I'm cool with it. So anywho, like I mentioned before, uh, everybody fails and Rainbow Dash says that, okay, I'm going to give them some pity points, but uh, she's not going to reward them for messing it up. So we see everybody sulking under a tree and then Swift comes in saying, bad news guys, we didn't score very well. I guess our friendship isn't strong enough. Uh, and then... We see Silver and um, Smolder just says that 
uh, we're not going to win at this rate, Principal Twilight is counting on us, and so on. And they're putting a lot of pressure on themselves because, well, they kind of are. They have a big responsibility that they need to cover. So later on inside the Colosseum, we see that Smolder is panicking and um, kind of pacing around, saying to the guys that we got to get this, uh, we got to get it together, everyone. It's because we have to pull this off. And Gallus is Gallus. Gallus is not. Um, how would we put this? Gallus is um, not taking it well. Like he mentioned something to a kind of if everybody have listened to me, we have done well and so on. And yeah, they start fighting. They start fighting, and this is what Swiftfoot wants. And um. Yeah, this is what Sifu wants. Uh, Osiris knows this, this and just says, uh, Stop fighting. It's almost our turn for the third feat. We're setting a bad example for our new friend. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly fighting in front of a new friend. That, that ain't cool. That ain't cool. But anywho, we start with the third round. And the third round is kind of run by Fluttershy. And the third feat is about cooperation. By working together, friends can accomplish anything. Each team has to look out for each other while caging the dangerous beasts. And Pinkie Pie, also there too, says that huge thanks to the administration of Tartarus for loaning us today's challenge. The triple threat for uh, the price of one scariest sisters anywhere. The Chimera. Oh no. So our ponies here have to fight a Chimera. If you guys got no idea what a Chimera is, um, I'm not 100% sure how true to history or how true to mythos this is, but a Chimera in My Little Pony is a body of a tiger with a head of a tiger and a goat and its tail is a sn head of a snake. Yes. So that is the chimera in the world of My Little Pony. Uh, also, its hind legs are hooves. So, yeah. Very chaotic. And also the goat breeze fire. So it starts chasing around the young six. And uh, the corner Osiris. Uh, oh, sorry. They trap Osiris into a cage. And they, well, they start catching the ponies and it's fun for them. Yay. Now, they try to, sorry, uh, now we see that Smolder and Gallus are arguing. And Smolder wants some feedback or wants a plan from Gallus. And Gallus just says, oh, now you want my input. And they start bickering. Um, it seems that Swift Food um, trap herself, well, uh, cage herself in one of the cage and uh, tells the Chimera saying that the yak is the strongest one, cage her next. So they, they kind of do a plan and we see that Sandbar here mentions to the group that they are, uh, we're two down. Uh, we need the plan, dudes. And Gallus quickly comes up with one with all the stress that he's under. So he tells the group that Smolder, Silverstream, pick a hit, we'll keep them distracted. Sandbar, Yona, start pushing her towards the big cage. And before that, like when uh, like uh, Swift mentioned before, the egg is the strongest, so they kind of corner her first. And I think they trap her or something like that? No, no, they didn't. They didn't. Like, they um, coil her with the tail or the snake. And seeing this, uh, Sandbar panics and tries to figure something out. And he releases Ocellus and asks Ocellus uh, to turn into something huge. Uh, she says she's scared, but um, I'm uh, sorry, but Sandbar just mentions that I'm scared too. But we all got to do our part, and my part is getting you out. 
And yeah, uh, it seems that uh, Sandbar is that um, is is really pushing Ocellus to do something. <laughs> Uh, Swiftfoot noticed this and sorry, um, Swiftfoot noticed this and just thought, uh, thinks to herself uh, I worked so hard to get them to be jealous of each other to distrust one another they should have abandoned each other by now but they're still trying why? this is, is this friendship? so now we see Ocellus standing up in front of the chimera and changing into something huge um a cyclops i think uh she grabs the cyclops and throws her into the cage and locks them up <laughs> and with that they won uh osiris changed back to normal and they go back to into the stadium uh, oh, Fleetfoot says that that was truly amazing the way you all worked together was before uh, Swiftfoot can finish what she was trying to say she lets one out or she, she just yells at um, Sandbar saying bullying is not teamwork and so on and at this point they all Bicker, they they all bicker. Uh, uh, they they all just <laughs> uh, release their grievances and whatnot, and yeah, they they just fight. And it seems that it's all according to Swiftfoot's plan. Ha ha ha! Equestria symbol of uh, of cross species harmony is falling apart. Ha 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 ha! And then we'll find out the answer next week. <laughs> so we've had episode ends. Okay, so uh, I know I haven't been giving my thoughts, but yeah, um, let's go for final thoughts. I like this part. I, I like this issue. This issue really shows that how a little bit of distrust, uh, deception misleading of information can really hurt a crew yeah and what Swiftfoot here did was pretty simple she didn't really need to do much just plant ideas just say a few words and yeah everybody's uh, feeling insecure about themselves feeling um, undermined or uh, so on I mean jealousy is there too so yeah we, we see a lot of that in here and Swiftfoot here is a really interesting character. Knowing that uh, she comes from uh, what's the land Tarasus Oof, give me a second. I'm going back to that panel because the word is not yes, our proud tribe of the sorry, you know uh, the land of trans and Proud of they are they're the they are the transient transients okay yeah whatever so overall it's okay it's fun I I enjoy the read and oh man when we hit the last issue we're oh I'm I'm going to uh, let out my grievances with this comic oh man so yeah uh, this comic is not bad like it's fun it's fun and uh you you have to understand where I was coming from with this one. Uh, we were waiting for the next issue to come out a month later, a month later. And yeah, man, I'm almost going there. Anyway, yeah, uh, with that, review ends. Uh, I like it. I like it. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BrainyLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash NPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another episode review. See ya!